welcome to another epic episode of DXB Today, where we're celebrating World Soil Day. We're going to be taking a deep dive into agriculture. So let's find out what's coming up. I went down to the Arbor School, the greenest school in Dubai. We learn about food production at the world's largest vertical farm based in Dubai with the manager of Emirates Crop One. And we check out a soil workshop over at COP28. Plus, we've got an incredible violinist performing in our studios before the end of the night. Now, there's going to be a lot of agri talk tonight, guys. Amy, Ahmed, yeah. do you have any plants at home? Yes, I do, actually. <laughs> I have a beautiful garden filled with so many flowers. The thing is, in the house in Abu Dhabi, my parents' house, we've got all kinds of things, mangoes, papayas, chili, mint, all of that. But it's hard to maintain a garden like that, especially when it's summer. And, uh, but right now, because the weather is better, my jasmine tree is blossom, and it's amazing. Beautiful. Amy, do you have anything? Well, unfortunately, <laughs> I'm a bit of a murderer when it comes to plants. The last thing I had was four cactus and I managed to die, like they all died, like I killed them all. <laughs> but I'm hoping that today's episode is going to inspire me into growing some vegetables. In the UK, I come from farmland, you know, everybody's eating organic veggies and homegrown stuff. So I'm hoping today's episode will inspire me and I want to take that up here on my balcony in Dubai. Yeah, you never know. We could learn a thing or two tonight for sure. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Well, someone that does know about agriculture is our co-host and hopefully they can teach us a little thing or two. So let's find out who today's guest co-host is. Hi, I'm Shamal Mohammed. I'm head of AgriTech at Silal. I can't wait to join you in the studio. Shamal will join us right here in just a little bit. But first, I went down to the Arbor School, the greenest school in the city, to find out how they create an environmentally conscious mindset among their students. Let's take a look. I am here at the Arbor School, the greenest school in Dubai, where we're going to be talking to the principal to know how they're integrating their commitment to environment into the curriculum. And also, we're going to be planting gaff trees. Arbor School, the greenest school in Dubai. Can you tell us why? I guess it's a, it's a state of mind, really, because uh, there's lots of schools leaning into this idea of sustainability and being green, but for Arbor, it's built into our vision, built into the curriculum, it's built into the places, as yeah. you can see, and it's built into the ways which we model it for our children in terms of our choices about energy and waste and water and those sorts of things. And the mission of the school, what is it? Our mission's a little different from most in yeah. that it still includes this idea of being fantastically literate and numerate. Those mm -hmm. things are, matter, but it's about creating a community that flourishes in all aspects, ecologically abundant, um, flourishing as humans and connected to nature. And, yeah. and when we are connected to nature, we start to understand the systems and how things interact. And since we're talking about this place, the biopark, can you please walk us through it? So here at Arbor, we have what we call the biopark, which consists of our three large um, climate controlled biodomes. Then we have our organic farm. Then we have the biopark outside, which is an interactive farm for the children. And in the domes, they're themed. Um, one is which is a slice of a sort of tropical um, nature untouched. Mm -hmm. And then the one in which we're currently in is this interaction between nature and man. So a lot of species which are harvestable, some animal species, you might hear the birds chirping, yes. and things that we can interact with as children. So we can learn again about connections or how to respectively deal with things, or we can look at different environments in which they grow and, and link that to science. And what differentiates your school from different ones? Because you, when you go to school, you don't expect to see something like this. Yeah, this is a bit special. It really is a bit special. <laughs> uh, you know, there's a commitment from the school to say we believe in the idea of sustainability yeah. because it gets us not to a sustainability level. That's not really enough. It gets us to a more abundant world, yeah. ecologically abundant. And since COP28 is, be, is going to be held here in Dubai, yeah. are you guys doing anything in regards to that? Look, we're, we're involved in lots of the smaller sort of um, education focused events. We've mm -hmm. got some of our fantastic role model students that are there speaking. But in all honesty, we've, we've sort of approached COP as the idea of what it is, which is a government level negotiation about how to fix some of the problems yes. and quick. But equally, we, we've approached it as it doesn't start or finish with COP. Our journey of sustainability continues before and after, and this is just a, a platform to call more loudly. So that's really where we're engaged in it. 
Great. Thank you very much for joining us on the show today. More than welcome. Great to talk. As the principal said, being in this place is very calming to the soul. I can only imagine how the kids are enjoying their time here at the school. We've learned a lot about Arbor School and how it's important for the kids to learn more about the environment. Yes, our very own Ahmed checking out Arbor School there. That looked fantastic, Ahmed. Yeah, yeah it did. I, honestly, I just can't imagine what the kids feel being there because growing up, we didn't have something like that. And it's just an amazing thing to have uh, the kids going through uh, the plants and planting their own plants and having the parents as well coming to the school to visit and check that out. It's just out of this world, honestly. Fantastic. Well, now it's time <coughs> to meet our co-host. Today, we have Agritech Expert, who is on a mission to transform the agriculture sector through cutting edge technologies and novel solutions. He is currently involved in enhancing productivity in over 900 farms in the region. Please welcome Shamal Mohammed on the show. Shamal, thank you so much for thank joining us. Thank you so much. Us. Nice to be here. Thank you. So, thank you. head of um, Agrotech at uh, Silal, can you tell me a little bit about that? Sure. So, Silal, uh, we are a, a company based in Abu Dhabi. Uh, we are working with uh, over 900 local farmers, mm -hmm. which they mostly produce in fresh produce like tomatoes, cucumbers, lettuce. Uh, so, we try to help with uh, knowledge, best practice, bringing technologies, uh, you know, upgrading our uh, production in, in UAE and, and increasing our local supply for the local market. Okay, because I mean, excuse my like ignorance here, but I always thought like living in the desert, is it not an impossible environment to grow your veggies? That's right. So I think UAE historically, agriculture was a, a key uh, pillar in, in our society here. So that's why, you know, most of the farmers are very keen on facing all the key challenges we have here. We have a very extreme weather. We don't have a good quality soil. We have a very limited uh, water, fresh water, as you know. So what they're trying to do is actually bringing the local production into a level that we can uh, supply our uh, customer, our client, and the public as well with a freshly grown product in UAE. You Incredible. mentioned about weather. Now, we, we're, there are a lot of climate talks with COP28 sure. right now. How do you connect that to Agritech? I think that's a good question because uh, when we thinking about climate change and all the sort of a projection was going to happen in the next couple of decades is uh, increase in temperature, uh, reducing the uh, availability of fresh water or uh, the, the, the quality of soil is degraded or will be degraded more in the future. So I think UAE is the best place where we can develop the next generation of solution that can help us to grow crop and food here, but also help in the, the global food supply in the future. Because if we can find a solution for all the challenges you mentioned, is going to be relevant to the other part of the world where uh, unfortunately the increase of temperature and, and, and limitation in the natural resources is going to be one of the uh, problems we're going to have in, in the next uh, couple of decades. And also we've discussed using tech and ag ag agriculture. How is it uh, integrated to you with each other? Right, so I think when we, we're looking at agri-tech, it's a quite a broad yeah. terminology. I mean, for us, is bringing the right technology into UAE and where the farmers can improve the efficiency. So for a start, we have a very limited growing season. So we are planting in September, October, and by April, uh, the temperature is going to go up again. So any, anything to do in an open field is going to be very short. So that's why we're building greenhouses, we have uh, net houses, and this is where the technology can help. So for example, we um, integrated uh, IoT sensors in 100 farms in Abu Dhabi. What the sensor is doing is, is measuring temperature in the greenhouse, measuring the soil moisture, so we can automate the irrigation requirements. So that precious water resources we have, we can use it as precise as possible, so to minimize the waste and obviously energy is another 
aspect of the food production here because if you have a greenhouse, it's going to get hot, <laughs> then you need to cool it down and then that's where you're using more water and more energy. So the technology can help bring in uh, a better uh, environment for the crop to grow. Another technology we are testing in our innovation oasis in Align is uh, heat blocking technology. So we have a plastic that can block the heat and let the right uh, uh, radiation to come to the crop. So that's why by default you are using less energy and less water. So that's really what we, we're trying to do. We're trying to bring technology, test it, evaluate it, and see is fitting with the local farmers and the climate we have here. Uh, if yes, then that's really where we're trying to kind of take it into the wider industry. Amazing. And how important is it for the land or the country to grow their own produce locally? I think we all know when COVID happened, mm -hmm. um, the, all the disruption in a supply chain uh, is created uh, a panic around yeah. the world, especially when it comes to the food. And, and, and that's why locally growing crop is really, really important because we need to have enough fresh supply where we can, in any cases, we can supply our uh, people here, mm -hmm. but also in case of any disruption in a supply chain where we cannot bring it somewhere else, we have enough uh, production in, in a country where we can, we can supply the market. So I think that's crucially important. And it's not only UAE, I think globally, everyone is trying to localize the production mm -hmm. because uh, again, coming back to COP28, shipping uh, pr fresh produce or any type of food has a you know a much greater carbon footprint yeah. so it's better to be here and i think there is a, a role for the consumer and our audience as well to look at for the locally produced uh, fresh produce in a supermarket because that's really where you can contribute into your environmental footprint moving forward. Definitely, that's what I was just going to say. It's so easy when you go to the supermarket and you see all this amazing fruit and veg, but where does it come from? Yes. So it's nice to be able to know that we have got an option now that's coming from here, the UAE, and we can take that. Absolutely. So what veggies and fruits are thriving here in the UAE in your projects? Right, so most of our local farmers are growing uh, fresh vegetables like tomatoes, cucumber, pepper, lettuce, melons. Uh, ourselves, we have a 600 hectare of farm. We are growing strawberries and blueberries. Oh, my favorite. So that's, uh, <laughs> that's your favorite. Uh, and, and we're trying to grow into really the high standard that we can supply the, the market with freshly grown, locally grown uh, fruit as well as vegetables. So I think for the majority, the focus on the fresh side because I think we need to be realistic. There are some broad acre crop like wheat and rice and that kind of uh, crop. I know there are interesting project is going on in the UAE on the wheat side. So we are trying to kind of focus on the vegetable in Silal. Incredible. Just a quick one, since you mentioned a few fruits and vegetables already, uh, there is such a diverse population here the, in the UAE. Yes. And there, there are people that are looking for fruits or vegetables that are endemic to their hometown to their country. Are you going to try and aim to produce those things here as well? Uh, we, we're trying to look at the different options and I think one of the challenges for the local farmers is having a limited crop to grow. So we're trying to bring some exotic crops to see and try and test it and that's why we as Silal we invested massively in uh, R&D and, and we're building innovation oasis mm -hmm. so we can test and try and, and see which crop is, is relevant, can be grown here to uh, supply the demand for uh, the diverse population yeah. we have in, in UAE. So answering your question, we are working on variety of crops and we're trying to find out which one is going to be more realistic to be grown here in UAE. Good well, Shamal, we still have plenty of time to Thank talk you. all about agriculture. But coming up, we're chatting with the manager of the world's largest vertical farm, Bustanica. Plus, we have a very talented artist performing for us tonight. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> 